Hey, hello! This is uh, the start of a new series of movies on the operation of potted ships, ships with azimuth propulsion. And I have to present some uh, new results which we achieved using our Summon Fast Time simulation tools. And additionally, I would like to show my new haircut. And um, this alone seems to qualify. Uh, you might have the same feeling if a new government introduces their new ministers. Okay, back to serious. Just kidding. What I plan is, uh, in the first movie, to start a comparison of uh, the operation of potted drives in a conventional way, same as for twin screw ships, for instance, or with new potted strategy where using the, the handles inward or outward. And as I said, it's the start of a new series. The second movie I plan is on the stern first method for potted ships if the ship is going astern into a port, for instance. Uh, and if you have some other ideas, please let me know. Then I will add some additional movie on aspects you might be interested in. Today, as I said, Comparison of conventional operation strategy and new pod strategy with in-out configuration. Um, what will be unique and what might be important? At least I will start in an introduction of the use of handles for these two methods I want to compare. Then I apply the uh, operation strategy onto a specific scenario uh, for a rival uh, maneuvers uh, for the port of Rostock as a sample and um, I will show movies for the two different strategies using the summon planning tool and the last will be the conclusions on the efficiency of these both uh, different strategies um, to use our um, sim opt sim dat tools. The introduction for the handle strategy. Um, you might use your handles, what we call a new strategy maybe, in contrast to a normal twin screw operation, to turn the handles uh, inward. And this is called toe-in positions, for instance. The next is toe-out position. So the handles are turned outside and the revolution will not be changed in this aspect. Um, then there might be this one. Uh, don't be confused. This is not an erotic uh, scene. Uh, it might be called double toe mixed. And this is seriously also being used in the operation of uh, potted ships, in this case with four azimuth propellers, for instance for double end ferries, which is a panel we, we have in our ship handling simulators. And the last part is how to say, how you may call it, tow back. I don't know, there's no name on it. And this means if you adjust the handles of the propulsion uh, turning it backwards, so to decrease the um, revolutions or increase the revolutions. And um, the background behind these different operations is you have uh, many parameters which you can um, control at the same time, turning and also back and forth. And sometimes it's too complicated. So. Uh, it's, uh, the new strategy was only to control the ship by turning the pots uh, and the handles uh, and not to use also the change of the revolutions. And this um, has the benefits that the in-out strategies is very convenient for control and also steering because only one parameters or at least two parameters for both pots are used, only turning. But the question is, and this is the uh, uh, reason behind this movie, is this really efficient? 
Okay, for a demonstration of this strategy, I would like to use a movie which Caspar uh, made using these two pot uh, handles and to introduce the effect on the prediction of these activities, so to say. If I turn both pots in 30, this is recognized as a toe in setting. My speed will drop slightly by that and if I go further to in 60 the speed drops faster. We can see that by the prediction shortening by the shapes moving closer together. Both in 90 this has the maximum drag force and this is a passive stopping of the vessel. Okay, this is the introduction for the toe-in or maybe the same for toe-out uh, maneuvers. Alternatively, as I said, you could use the change of revolutions. And uh, we will compare both of these strategies. And the scenario we will be choosing is there's a cruise ship which is just entering the fairway here to the port of Rostock. The ship will be uh, reducing speed, will be turned and goes back to finally be burst here at this position. So we have the first section reducing the speed. Here it's stopping on turning and then go back to berth the ship alongside the berth. Um, and the same scenario I will be using first with the conventional pot strategy by speed changes made by reducing the pot revolutions and then the so-called new pot strategy to only turning the pots. And in the final end we will compare the efficiency of both versions. Okay, this is now um, a movie using the so-called summon planning tool by fast time simulation. Okay, I will start the movie now. This is now the demonstration of a pot ship operation in a conventional way. We have here a cruise ship which has just passed the breakwater and is between these buoys. Uh, this cruise ship has two azimuth propulsion systems where we can change the engine order by means of this sliders and the azimuth angle by this slider. For the time being it has just the speed of 6.9 knots which we want to further reduce. And we can do this reduction by changing the engine order, for instance, to 20%. You immediately see that the ship shapes getting closer together, so this means the speed comes down, maybe to 10, oh sorry, maybe to 10%. And then we will have a look what the speed is at this, at this position. For this reason, we change the time slider, so our reference position. So we move it along the already predicted track uh, up to the uh, beginning of this uh, shipyard base, turning basin. Uh, the prediction for the time being is uh, set to um, six minutes, so we are just at the end of the prediction. And here we have now a speed of about four knots. This is what we want to achieve. So from here we want to continue with that speed. So we add a maneuvering point here. So the reference is now at this position. And then we look for the next position. Okay, this is now in fast mode. I mean the movie is in fast mode. I will explain what happens. So the ship is moved forward here setting a maneuvering point, we have a reference now, a new reference to control the speed loss and the turning of the ship. So the first, uh, what is being done is to stop one of the pots and the other pots will be turned. And uh, then you see um, that if we increase the revolution a little bit, then the pot will uh, provide more control force and then we see how 
easily the ship can be turned. With this configuration we call a T-bone. Um, then uh, the, the, to start um, entering the fairway from the opposite direction we will uh, use the, uh, the next strategy to go ahead with both uh, slots, uh, both pots slightly and then to <coughs> adjust the pots only in a head direction and then we can go to this burst. So I, I don't want to show the end of this maneuver. So this is now the movie with the new pot strategy with toe in or toe out configuration changing the speed only by turning the pots in and outward, which is very easy, but we will see what happens. So this is now a demonstration again with the Salmon planning tool. To, to demonstrate the new pot strategy where the speed changes were uh, achieved by turning the pots inward, so they lose uh, some part of their power in the head direction, so the speed will go down. We have the same situation as before for the conventional strategy. The ship has just passed the breakwater and the speed is about uh, 7 knots and we want to further reduce the speed here. But this time not by changing the engine order, we want to use this pots and to turn them both uh, uh, in the same time inward. So 10 degree to this side, 10 degree to the other side, uh, 15, 20 to the other side. So the pot is slightly turning inward and we are doing this until we have reached about 60 degree for both pots turning inward. And when we look on the shapes here, so they are squeezed together, that means the speed was reduced. And if we move our, uh, if we move our slider, the time slider, on that already calculated maneuver to the beginning of the turning basin at the shipyard, then we see, okay, the speed has already dropped to about four knots. So this is what we want to achieve. And this should be continuing uh, for the uh, remaining part of the fairway until we reach the turning area. So we go with our ship up to this position where we just uh, passing the buoys at the beginning of the fairway. And then we set a maneuvering point and think about what is to do next. So. The, the next uh, situation will be then to turn the pots further inward, so to nearly 90 degrees, so that means the speed will drop even more. So we see that uh, the ship comes nearly to a halt at this position. And uh, then we move the ship to this position and set a new maneuvering point. And uh, in the same way, we can then use the pots. We use now one pot in the same direction as the others to uh, exclusively turn the ship. So that's what you see. The starboard pot will be also turned in this direction. So the ship turns on the spot because it's a very efficient maneuvering uh, uh, device. And then uh, we move the ship to a certain position where we can again line her up and bring her back to the, uh, to the fairway in the opposite direction. And this is being done by, again, move two, the two pots into 60 uh, degree toe-in position uh, to really go into the fairway and then to finally move the ship into this direction to stop her. The full maneuver can be seen uh, on our website. Uh, I will show it at the final end, where Kaspar did a very good job to show how this ship is being controlled by this toe-in, toe-out uh, strategy to be finally burst here. So the, the complete maneuvering plan is to be seen here up to this position. And as I said, I did it one, with, one time with the 
conventional strategy, controlling the revolutions by the engines, and the other one is only by the toe-in, toe-out strategy. And so we made two maneuvering plans um, for these strategies, and as I said, it's all proven by simulation. In the same time I do this maneuvering plan with the planning tool, it's simulated. And then I have to compare both strategies. For this comparison, I used our so-called ZimDart tool to visualize all the results. We can look into up to 2,000 parameters to compare the ships and engine dynamics. And you see here, this is on the top. This is a time history of speed and engine revolutions. So this is the speed. As you see, the speed was nearly the same except some of the faces here. But the difference is, in the one strategy, the engine order settings were so all kept constant. Only the ports were turning angles were used for controlling the speed. And the other time, it was by changing the revolutions. So even here to set the engine to stop and then to accelerate one engine again. With a, so this is the difference. And in this uh, graph, you see also the pot angles together with engine order and also the fuel consumptions. Um, so you see here in one, the blue ship is by controlling the speed by the engine orders, which were pushed down. And for the other ships, both of the pots get different angles here. So you see here the two different strategies. The red ship was only controlled by the pot angles and the other ship was only controlled, the speed was only controlled by the revolutions. Now we will focus on the fuel consumption because you see that the fuel consumption is different. This is for the new strategy with the toe in out and this is for the conventional strategy. I will highlight this a little bit more. So here we see it more clearly. You see for the uh, toe in strategy or out strategy, the fuel consumption in every segment of our maneuvering um, um, procedures, the fuel consumption is higher than for the conventional because we stopped the engine here, we used it with reduced revolutions here, and here we stopped it again, for instance. So uh, you see clearly that the fuel consumption for the conventional strategy is much smaller. And if you sum it up in a cumulative way, then you see here, this is for the new toe-in strategy and this is for the conventional strategy. So the result is that for the conventional strategy the fuel consumption is, is it's only one-third of the new strategy. If you want to have a look how we did it and what will be the future um, uh, prospects then you can look into this uh, paper which I uh, provided for the International Association of Maritime Universities conference in Alexandria this, this year. And the future will be that we also calculate not only the fuel but also the emissions to compare all of the maneuvers. Okay, to draw some conclusions. So there's a great benefit to look onto the fuel consumption or into the energy which we spend for maneuvers. Uh, in future also for emissions, uh, into the simulation, uh, which allows for the conclusion that the conventional operation of pots might have a benefit to only have 30% fuel consumption or energy compared to the new uh, toe-in, toe-out strategy. So if you conclude uh, that the operating of pots against each other is a waste of energy and also damage to the environment, therefore, uh, then you should come to the idea maybe it, in some parts of your maneuvers it's better to uh, use the conventional strategy and to use the toe-in strategy only if it's really necessary. Uh, you might compare this with you operating your own car 
um, the toe in strategy could you compare with you keep the throttle constant and the speed changes were only by using the brakes or release the brake and then you control the speed, which you immediately would say is ah, this is nonsense. But uh, in general, this uh, fast time simulation is a very effective tool uh, to, um, how to say, to replace theoretical explanations or only guessing, for instance. And it's very great for briefing, debriefing of simulator training and also maybe on for planning on board. So only a proper simulation model is uh, necessary, which can be achieved by, I don't know, 10,000 euro, and then you have it. Um, then you can com prepare a complete maneuvering plan for each arrival or departure maneuver. And if you compare it with simulation in a simulator, these full mission simulation of these two strategies I have shown would take maybe with some alternatives hours. So you save a lot of time and increase your mental model of the ship's behavior. And for training, you could do it, uh, you could leave it to any student's individual to find out his best uh, strategy. So the summary is, it has some proven benefits for lecturing, for analyzing tools, and so it's a great potential for increasing the efficiency and sustainability of maneuvering also on board. Um, you might think twice about this uh, issue if you have only a ship which is battery based, uh, electric drive where your capacity is limited and you have to enter a port, then you are looking for the most efficient strategy and not to start the engine really close to the berth. And the final remark I would like to say is um, there are some more movies on azimut propulsion simulation to be found on our YouTube channel. So you only have to enter ISIMS GmbH and then you find, will find the movies and there's specifically uh, one of the playlists for Aziput maneuvering where all the movies are already there which were made with the Summon monitoring tool by Kaspar and this is a, a great uh, introduction on port maneuvering and now we will add also this movie I made about the ported drive uh, aspects. Thanks a lot.